call this meeting of the Common Council Committee of the Whole to order roll call, please. And uh, uh, before we do that, uh, we'd just like to go on the record as saying that we have, because of the uh, current uh, emergency, uh, health emergency, we have uh, waived the stipulation of attendance and we have two council members, uh, Council President Bill Brandel and uh, Council Member Peg Beyer on speakerphone with us tonight so we'll take roll call please first of all uh, those on speakerphone please say your name Peg Beyer Bill Randall perfect thank you Alderman Kroos here Horn here Beyer here Peachy here Miller here Brandall here Lars here Tully here thank you next we'll turn it over to City Administrator Tim Freitag. Great. Uh, well, I think it I think it'd be fair to say that uh, we've witnessed uh, some unprecedented events this uh, this past week. Quite frankly, uh, some things that I never really expected to encounter with a pandemic uh, declaration by the World Health Organization, a federal emergency uh, declaration, a state emergency de declaration, a statewide uh, school closing, and. Uh, as we saw today, a limitation on uh, public gatherings, uh, which we'll talk about in just a little bit. Um, but before we get into this discussion, and there is an action uh, that uh, will appear on the business agenda at seven o'clock that we'll talk a little bit uh, specifically about. But before we get to that point, uh, Joe maybe can tell you a little bit about uh, what the local uh, Jefferson, uh, Jefferson County conditions are. Well, currently no cases uh, in the city or county of Jefferson, um, according to our health department. Tim, uh, Tim, we do have, uh, Tim, Tim. Um, could, Mike. You, could, could you come yeah, to the come podium, on, Joe? Yeah, thanks. And just make sure that green light is on. All right, so yeah, currently there's no cases. Uh, speaking with our county uh, health nurse, in the health department for for jefferson um no positive cases in the county yet we do have some cases surrounding us uh, quite a few actually uh with dane county with 19 um waukesha with just four but uh the dane county 19 they don't know where a lot of them uh those people got their virus from so that's now it's being spread throughout the population with without any known uh, contact with someone who traveled or had had contact with someone positive. And of course, the Milwaukee is the closest um, real hot spot with 24 cases at this time. Total of 72 cases for the state. Um, locally, uh, watching social media, a lot of our businesses are preparing for this by uh, extra cleaning, limiting how many people are in their businesses. And of course, with that new order today, a lot of bars and restaurants uh, announced they were closed today at 5 p.m. other than their, their carry out. Um, that's, that's about all I have for the local. Yeah, no deaths locally. I think what makes this outbreak different from uh, others, say H1N1, is that we have a general lack of testing. Don't know where the outbreaks may have occurred in uh, the state of Wisconsin. And I think in general, there's a, a lack of understanding of COVID-19 and its impacts, although that's changing uh, the more researchers have an opportunity to discuss it. What it does provide for is a really anxious and nervous public. And you know, my experience always tells me when uh, you have a very anxious and nervous public, it leads to atypical behavior. So uh, you see things that have been happening in grocery stores and things like that with uh, runs on paper goods and foods. Um, actually, I'm, I'm not too surprised about that. But having said that, um, I wanted to take just a few seconds uh, and just review with the board uh, what the city's emergency government procedures are. By ordinance, the administrator and the chief of police are designated as the emergency government directors. Um, the city does have a pretty comprehensive emergency management program. Uh, I think you probably brought a copy of that. Um, 
I don't think any of you really want to get into it. It's a, certainly a cure for insomnia uh, if you wanted to read the whole thing. Uh, the manual does include uh, an infectious disease outbreak section. But one of the things that we think as the city tries to address this is our current policy really requires some additional treatment um, in the form of a new COVID-19 protocol uh, that includes contingency planning, research, resource allocation planning, uh, and general city protocols. And we'll kind of cover that uh, during the next 10 or 15 minutes of our discussion. I think, Ken, you handed out a copy of, of, of that. Yeah. Uh, and that's been developed largely over the last maybe two weeks uh, by uh, staff uh, working internally. <clears throat> So in terms of uh, COVID-19 uh, policy and protocol, we really have two concerns, right? We want to protect the public, uh, and then we want to protect the workforce. And generally, if there's one thing that sort of keeps guys like Ken and I up at night, it's that large segments of the workforce would be infected, uh, requiring that they stay away from the workforce, and then we'd have a hard time providing basic services. Uh, particularly essential emergency government services. So uh, that's the one I think we're extremely uh, nervous about. Quite honestly, as the testing expands, we expect the impacts to be much more significant and much more widespread. Um, and we think this is sort of a long-term event. Uh, a lot of uh, uh, the closings that have happened uh, currently have taken place uh, uh, with the assumption of April 6th um, you know a lot of our closings tie to that same timeline but quite frankly internally we're planning that this is a much longer event and some of these closings stay in place uh, well after April 6th but I guess we'll see uh, where we stand when it comes to that so uh, what I really want to uh, let you know tonight is that uh, in terms of workforce protection um, what you can expect is there'll be quite a bit of additional sanitation of municipal facilities. Um, there will be a, a reallocation of cleaning service time. We have some facilities like the senior center that currently is closed. We'll allocate those hours to the police department and uh, municipal building. Um, and so we'll add extra days of, of cleaning. Um, in between trips or visits by the cleaning service, you'll see city staff uh, out uh, sanitizing, wiping, wiping down uh, flat surfaces, uh, door handles, um, things like that. Um, in addition, um, uh, we will need to uh, purchase uh, additional supplies and protective gear. So supplies, obviously, sanitation supplies, protective gear, gloves, masks, Tyvek suits, things like that. I would generally describe our inventory um, organizationally as adequate for the time being, um, but not abundantly so. So that means as materials become available, they're hard to get a hold of, quite frankly, but as they become available, you know, we'll be like looking to make um, additional uh, purchases as time goes on. The one big provision in the manual, the protocol manual that Ken handed out that I want to bring to your attention is that our policy provides that the city is going to provide up to 14 days of emergency sick leave for an employee who tests positive or an employee that may be quarantined at home because of contact with someone else that has tested uh, positive. Um, those days would be subject to medical verification by a public health organization or a uh, 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 medical personnel. Um, that may all be mute because it probably will be preempted at the end of the day by federal legislation that is expected to be approved and the president has indicated he will sign that not only grants 14 days uh, of emergency sick leave but it also provides additional family medical leave uh, wage and salary coverage uh, for I think that's up to 90 days uh, for any employee that may have to care for someone stricken at home child a 
family relative uh, whatever the case may be so um, but in the event that federal legislation doesn't materialize our policy provides that you know we're going to provide 14 days of uh, emergency sick leave for uh, our employees um, sick, yeah. sick leave or, um... emergency sick leave if uh, if 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 they're up to up to 14 days jim short-term disability it's not short-term disability it's income continuation in the form of uh sick leave for anyone that uh, has a positive test or is forced to quarantine at home because of uh, contact with someone who has if it's medically verified um the the one thing i would say is uh i would expect to s spend some money quite honestly, and uh, one of the really good things that I think the city council did five or six years ago, and we did it primarily in response to just having to repetitively deal with annual flooding, we started to set fund balance aside in the form of an emergency fund. Now, typically we've used that to deal with fall and spring flooding, but we will carry that over and utilize that, or the plan is to utilize that uh, to address some of these additional costs without putting pressure on the city's operating budget. So currently that reserve is $50,000 um, of our fund balance. So um, if you have any questions about that, uh, I'd be more than um, happy to, to, to try to answer them, but quite frankly, we're gonna need to spend money. Uh, in terms of some of the public protective uh, measures, um, I will tell you that the Jefferson Library is closed. Uh, to the public, uh, including all its programming. Um, uh, employees are reporting to work, but the library is closed. The senior center is currently closed with the exception of the senior meal program. And Cindy has figured out a way how to let uh, those people uh, do food prep, but it's all delivered uh, to an individual's house. There is no in-facility dining. And as I say, generally these um, tied to the April 6th date, but the reality is we're thinking indefinitely in terms of those closings having to uh, continue longer. All park and recreation programs uh, have been su suspended uh, for a similar time frame. Uh, municipal court has been su suspended uh, at least through April 6th and perhaps longer. And uh, the public counter at Jefferson Utilities has closed. They are accepting payments only via the drive uh, through. Um, some other things that um, uh, may very well uh, occur, uh, there may be some workforce that uh, can be assigned to work from home. I would think those would be very limited numbers of employees. Pretty tough to do that with paramedics and police officers, but you know we have some office staff. <clears throat> that we're considering trying to do that just to minimize uh, the times when we're all together because really how this works is if someone came into City Hall that um, you know is affected and they have contact with the staff out there you know you're all supposed to self quarantine and that's the concern about losing bodies and who's left to provide services. Um, we may also do some very limited redeployment of the workforce. Someone hired to do something for us, they may be re redeployed to do something else. We're thinking about that. That would apply to a very, very limited number of employees. And then we have um, the prohibition that happened this afternoon when the government, uh, governor signed his emergency order limiting public gatherings to 10. Uh, I'll turn that over to Ken, and Ken can tell you how he intends to uh, deal and enforce that. So, um, obviously, it, it's been fast and furious the last what, 48 hours for all of us. Dr. Vinny, this morning, we were good to go, and then came 2 o'clock this afternoon. So, we right <laughs> we're exempt. So, we're exempt. We're exempt. So, would you read these ex exemptions? Saying. Yeah, because all of us will be off, but long story short, we got some call complaints already today. The auto auction was one. So what we're, we've been doing is when we get a complaint, we take the order up and we explain to the manager or the owner what the, the governor's declaration is. Our idea is not, we don't, we, we don't, businesses are already gonna take a huge hit. 
and the last thing they need is to have the police department come in and say we're going to give you a five hundred dollar ticket if they abjectly refuse that that's a different circumstance but people have been pretty understanding with it uh, i came i just drove by today subway is still open so there's still some restaurants open it, it, it's going to take a while for the news to spread i think we have to use a wide berth of discretion before we go and sending police officers into facilities to shut them down. By, I'm sure by tomorrow morning, everybody will be aware of it. So well, carry out's okay though. Like carry out, delivery is okay. When, when it comes to food to food items, that's just fine. So that that's okay. So at least some businesses can still function in some kind of limited capacity at least. But um, that's, that's kind of where we are at. These are, I would say these are very severe restrictions placed on us. And, it's going to hurt businesses. There's no doubt about it statewide. So, but that our take on it is, is again, we're going on a complaint only basis. I'm not going to send officers into facilities now. If an office happens a day or two, we start seeing it, then we're going to go in, but we're going to act as professionals and just ed educate people. That's what we'd rather do than enforce. So, uh, Chief, if someone refuses to obey the governor's orders, I heard you say that you can issue a citation, Correct. $500 fine. Mm -hmm. Is there any other enforcement? Uh, I would, uh, what I would say, Chris, is especially when it comes to license premises, I think that we would, uh, with, with the council's emergency de declaration, the president's with the state, at that point, we can order them closed. That means we'll stay there based on the authority granted to us to do about that. About non-licensed businesses? I would, I would assume the same thing, because if, if the council makes an emergency declaration tonight, it, it's it's a really tough thing, but that would be uh, supervisory level stuff where we go in and sit down and, and talk to a business owner or manager and explain to them, this is not a, this is not a choice. This isn't voluntary. This is, is, basically, you don't have a choice. This is an emergency declaration because it's a public health. automatically with the emergency declaration it covers all town village city ordinances but that would be it. and that's what I sent out to my staff that is an absolute absolute last resort that has to be made at a supervisory level what is the amount of people I'm reading the paper and it's 50 it's is 10 it's 10 peg they the gov or the governor re, uh, issued a new order that was yesterday's order Today he issued a new a new order. Uh, this is uh, declaration number five. I think you probably can find it online. Emergency order number five. Um, that's the one that deals today with uh, closure of uh, restaurants and taverns and also uh, gathering of ten persons. With 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 uh, there's certain exemptions that are listed. That'll be in the Morrow's paper, Peg. That's what I was looking at. Yep. Tuesday's paper was 50. Yep. And that changed this afternoon. This applies to churches okay. as well, correct? As I understand it, you're, um, it, does. Mayor, it, do, it does. When you take it a look. Just, it just looks as a suggestion um, by the president that I read after that. It does, where the number 10 came up. I didn't. I guess that's where I was. And from what I watching the the gentleman from this um the health um rc i can remember all that from uh he said not to i guess he didn't he said not to get hung up on numbers from 50 to 10 to 25 that's not not to get hung up on that and you know he said don't go around and count people um but he said the idea is to keep the numbers you know you know, 50 and less, but, you know, don't get, like, if somebody has 11 people there, don't give them a ticket or something. It, it, I guess let's be careful that we don't go over the, over the top of I, what, we're, I couldn't know, have, what, I, what, what we're telling people to do. Um, let's just use some common sense. I couldn't agree with you more. And not, and not get hung up on, on numbers. Let's just, get, you know, use the social... Um, you know, get people uh, 
six feet, three feet, six feet apart, and the, you know, the hand washing, all the stuff that makes more sense than whether we've got 10 or 15 people. That's not as stringent as, you know, as important as the, the hygiene and, and uh, staying farther apart from each other and the cleaning of everything. From what, everything that I've been watching home while I've been sick. So, and not going to work when you're sick, because that's the other thing. But, okay, I'll let you guys keep going. Okay, good. Thank you. Well, we're, we're nearing the finish line. Um, uh, just two more general areas to cover. Um, in terms of future considerations, these are bridges we're going to cross maybe within the next day or so, um, looking at uh, a prohibition of uh, employee meetings outside the office, uh, cancellation of scheduled leaves, prohibiting employees traveling outside the area or state from returning to the workplace without satisfying uh, quarantine protocol and prohi uh, prohibiting the public from visiting municipal facilities with the exception of City Hall. Those are all CDC recommended guidelines. Uh, we just haven't implemented them at this time. Um, we're kind of chewing on them, but that may be the next set of things that we have to take a look out look at uh, but lastly uh, the agenda is amended um, I think it probably is the last order of business on the agenda um, we did add uh, a City Council emergency declaration resolution uh, we're going to suggest that you put that in place tonight uh, that does basically two things number one it positions the city for any federal or state reimbursement nursement that might be made available you don't get that unless you have an emergency declaration. And then the second thing is that designates Tim, in this case, and Ken, to act on behalf of the council to address or deal with this particular emergency. And that is really all I think I have. Ken, do you have anything no, else? I think no. you covered it all. Other than we'd be glad to answer um, any any questions. Um, you know, this is all moving pretty fast. A lot of this has happened since the last council meeting, quite honestly. And, you know, I expect that it continue to even move as fast in the near term. What about the election? Um, there's not been any guidance as, as far as I can tell you, uh, Peg. Uh, the election is still scheduled for that first Tuesday in April. Uh, although I think a lot of guidance or guidelines on things uh, the city can do to protect not only people voting but election workers, which is a concern for us because workers tend to be a, a vulnerable population, right, the elderly. So we're, uh, we're doubly concerned. So I'm sure there will be some new procedures put in place, but as far as I know, I haven't read or heard of any discussion uh, somehow that would postpone uh, that election. Okay. Other communities have asked some of their uh, more elderly volunteers to sit this one out, so there may be a need for more election workers. Got a lot of kids. Yeah. A lot of students that could sit in. That's certainly an opportunity. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But that's something we're going to need to right. take action on prior to next the next meeting, so that we can they can be duly authorized. I don't Any know. other questions of Tim or Yeah, Ken? just for you, Amanda, I know that you've been polling your people. Are you having a lot of a lot of your poll workers not wanting to so do this? So I called all the poll workers that we had scheduled for the April 7th election today. Um, out of them, I don't have exact numbers, but I was surprised. Overwhelmingly majority of them said they are not concerned about this, even concerning their ages and told me that they still want to work. I did phrase it to them that, you know, if anything changes in the next few days or week to please let us know as soon as possible. And that, you know, we just want to make sure that they feel that coming to City Hall is safe and within their best interest. Um, I did have some say thank you for calling and I have decided not to, so. So I think, Dale, the, 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 the last word I would say, uh, um, I would generally say that emergency declaration is important. I want to make sure if anyone has any heartburn about that, that we kind of talk about that now because, you know, we really kind of put that in place with the 2008 flood and it was indispensable because you just need someone to make decisions. 
and in sometimes they're relatively quick decisions and I think it'd be the thing to do and that's what we would suggest. Okay. Any other questions or comments? You had just put up a sign towards for weapons, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. We'll put that on the front door and that's one way to get the message across. <laughs> Which one right in? Anyone else? So then the emergency declaration, is it open ended or is it give a, a specific date for now? I think it ties to this particular event. It's open ended. Okay. But it, it, but it, so it doesn't say April 6th. It's no, 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 no. Yeah, right. Okay. Okay. And a point to be determined. Okay. Well, I, I think it'll end when the governor rescinds his uh, emergency orders. Right. And no one, including the governor, knows when that, that's going to be. I can guarantee you that. You okay. Anything else? Uh, Mary, you had, had questioned about the churches. I know that uh, the church <coughs> I attend, uh, they're not having uh, services. They're doing live feed. So I don't know about the rest of them, but that's what they're doing. So we don't need to attend. We just go online. Mm -hmm. And that will probably be a more common practice in the near future. I mean, that's, that's one option. We also have the resource of our uh, city uh, public access cable station uh, for uh, churches organizations that would like to make use of that as well. Yep. We will call them tomorrow. I, I had a nice conversation with John Faust yeah. about how we can make that available. Yeah, we can use that and, and provide that service to people. Any other questions? Now I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So Second. Mr. Vice Mayor, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 We are adjourned. Thank you. We're going to drop you off, Bill and Peggy. Okay. okay. Call this meeting in the Compton Council to order. Roll call, please. Alderman Horn. Here. Byer. Peachy. Here. Miller. Here. Brandel. <laughs> Lars. Here. Tully. Here. Kroos. <clears throat> Resolution number 90, tonight's consent agenda. Alderman Tully, please. Thank you, Mayor. City of Jefferson, resolution number 90, be it resolved by the Common Council of the City of Jefferson, Wisconsin, that the consent agenda for March 17, 2020 is hereby adopted. It's not on here. Vouchers payable for March 2020 in the amounts of $161,979.75. Payroll summary for March 13, 2020 in the amount of $165,178.63 and February manual checks in the amount of $4,534.16. Council minutes from March 3rd, 2020 of the Common Council. Licenses as approved by the Regulatory Committee tonight. Operator's licenses, there were none. Special Class B license for Gamitlakite days at the Jefferson County Fairgrounds. Six month Class B license for the Jefferson Blue Devils. And we had one agent transfer for Speedway, the gas station on South Main Street. And uh, Finally, we had the paint, authorized a payment for the flag installation to the uh, Reinhardt Wendell Post of the American Legion, and uh, that was $600, the same as it's been for the last, for the previous years. I would so move. It's been moved. Is there a second? Second. Second by Alderman Lars. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor of approval, please signify by saying aye as your name is called. No, if you're opposed. Alderman Peachy. I accept the minutes. I'll abstain from those. Miller? Aye. Lars? Aye. Tully? Aye. Kroos? Aye. Horn? Aye. It's unanimous. Resolution number 91, a resolution awarding sewer televising equipment. In lieu of Alderman Brandel's absence, Alderman Horn, please read it. Thank you, Honorable Mayor, Council Members, and Citizens of Jefferson, City of Jefferson, Resolution number 91. Whereas the city of Jefferson wastewater utility obtained three quotes from vendors for the replacement of sewer televising equipment. And whereas the finance committee has reviewed the quotes and concurs with the recommendation of the wastewater utility superintendent to purchase the equipment from McQueen equipment of Menominee Falls, Wisconsin, and re recommends the same to the common council. And now therefore it be resolved by the common council of the city of Jefferson, Wisconsin, that herein awards the purchase of the water sewer televising equipment from McQueen Equipment in 
be it further resolved by the Common Council of the City of Jefferson that the City Administrator is herein authorized and directed to execute any contract or document associated with the above action on behalf of the City of Jefferson following its review by the City Attorney. I so move. It's been moved. Is there a second? Second. Second by Alderman Peachy. Any discussion? This was reviewed at Finance? Correct, as he had stated, and it was unanimous there. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? Seeing none, all in favor of approval, please signify by saying aye as your name is called. No, if you're opposed. Alderman Peachy. Aye. Miller? Aye. Lars? Aye. Tully? Aye. Kraus? Aye. Horn? Aye. It's unanimous. Thank you. Resolution number 92, a resolution approving the contract for the swimming pool resurfacing. Alderman Peachy, please. Thank you, Honorable Mayor Upperman, fellow council members, and citizens of Jefferson. City of Jefferson, resolution number 92. Whereas the City of Jefferson solicited bids to strip, paint, and plaster, fix any structural repairs, and resurface the Jefferson Family Aquatic Center, and whereas due to the specialization of this process, we received a response from one vendor, and whereas the bid was from Sunseeker Pool Masonry LLC in the amount of $167,026, and whereas the Finance Committee has reviewed and approved this project, and whereas the overall project estimate is $170,000 that was budgeted in the 2020 capital projects budget, and now therefore be it resolved by the Common Council of the City of Jefferson, Wisconsin, that it herein authorizes the City Administrator to sign the contract to resurface the Jefferson Family Aquatic Center with Sunseeker Pool Masonry LLC at a not to exceed $167,026. I would so move. It's been moved. Is there a second? Second. Second by Alderman Miller. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor of approval, please signify by saying aye as your name is called. No if you're opposed. Alderman B Miller? Aye. Lars? Aye. Tully? Aye. Kraus? Aye. Horn? Aye. Peachy? Aye. It's unanimous. Thank you. Resolution number 93, a resolution adopting emergency... Declaration. Declaration. Thank you. Alderman Horn, please. Thank you, Honorable Mayor, Com Common Council members, citizens of Jefferson. City of Jefferson Resolution Number 93, Emergency Declaration, City of Jefferson. Whereas on this day, under Chapter 323 of the Wisconsin Statutes in the City of, Jef City of Jefferson Emergency Management Ordinance, Chapter 46, it is hereby declared that the citywide state of emergency exists in the City of Jefferson. And whereas the World Health Organization designated the COVID-19 pandemic as a public emergency of international concern, and whereas the COVID-19 is a contagious and at times fatally respiratory disease, and whereas the worldwide public pandemic of COVID-19 and the effects of its extreme risk of person-to-person -person transmission throughout the United States signifies significantly affect the life of and health of our people as well as the economy and is a disaster that impacts the health, security, and safety of the public. And whereas the governor of the state of Wisconsin decla declared a state of emergency, the president of the United States has issued a declaration of national, national emergency, and the United States Health and Human Services Secretary has declared a public health emergency for the entire United Sa States to aid the nation's healthcare community in responding to COVID-19. And whereas with the need to be proactive and prepare, we, the Common Council of the City of Jefferson, find that the potential for disaster exists, with, which requires extra, extraordinary, extraordinary measures to protect the health and well-being of our citizens. Declaring a state of emergency will facilitate and expedite the use of the resources to protect persons from the impacts of spread of COVID-19 while maintaining continuity of operations for the City of Jefferson. And now therefore be it resolved by the Common Council of the City of Jefferson, hereon authorize the City Administrator and Police Chief identified by the City Ordinance 46 as Emergency Management Directors, all the powers conferred upon them by the governing body of the City of Jefferson under all applicable statutes and ordinances, which within the discretion of the emergency managers appear necessary expedient during this said state of emergency. I so move. It's been moved. Is there a second? Second. 
Second by Alderman Kraus. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor of approval, please signify by saying aye as your name is called. No, if you're opposed. Alderman Lars. Aye. Tully. Aye. Kraus. Aye. Horn. Aye. Peachy. Aye. Miller. Aye. It's unanimous. The discussion on the VFW Rec Center Commercial Kitchen has been stricken from the agenda. I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Mr. Peachy. Second. Second by Mr. Tully. On a voice vote, all in favor of adjourning, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. We are adjourned. Okay, next.